welcome to Our Town, Dorothy Thompson speaking to you today from Simon's Recreation Complex, a place where you can get fit and have fun. Uh, on the show, well, we have a look at cooking. Hi, Robin. We are in your kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kitchen. Yeah, we're in the kitchen, and we're going to cook a bun salad today, as well as a roasted tomato soup and a loaf of bread. Wow. Can we do that in half an hour? Sure, or more. For... We've, been, we've been working on it already. Okay. This is, I want to introduce my lovely assistant, Chris. <laughs> Hello. We met Chris at the garden. Yeah, about three I'm, weeks. The, I'm on the garden team. It was yeah. 105 yeah. degrees. Yeah. Well, it's much cooler today. It is. Good yeah. day for soup. Yep. Yeah, and everybody already knows Mark. Yeah. Mark's going to make a loaf of bread. Why don't, why don't you Check. hop into that? Okay, sure. Let yeah. me uh, show you how this all works. It's uh, super simple. It's so easy Ben, that you could that do I could. This. I, my name always comes up that even Ben can do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. I should get royalties or something. <laughs> okay, it's only four ingredients, and uh, and I've got them all lined up here. Oh, this is what you showed me last time I was here. It's uh, the no need bread. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and now you get to see it ha actually happening. Three cups of flour. I prefer bread flour, but you can certainly use. Uh, uh, all-purpose flour as well and then here's a cup and a half of water and then we'll be using three quarter teaspoons of yeast and we we're finding our little uh, <laughs> measuring <laughs> devices so what we'll do is we'll just and, and then salt that's all it is four ingredients flour water <clears throat> yeast and salt okay, those, those will work as well so yeah so I'll just uh, mix up a little water with our flour here, and then oh, that's what we put, we'll put in our three-quarter teaspoon of yeast. And I, I typically like to have the water a little on the warm side, which helps with the yeast. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between the different types of flour? Is it the consistency or where? It well, consistency and gluten. Uh, oh, there's there's yeah. a couple different things that are involved. Uh, but yeah, and uh, and I mean, there's a, just a little salt basically, and I just sprinkle some in there. It's like, and you can put in more or less as you wish, and so it, we'll just mix this all up, and then uh, we'll put it into a. Actually, there's a, there's another step involved that this needs to sit for probably six to eight hours. Mm. And uh, we're not gonna wait for that. Okay, good. <laughs> this is not, uh, not that kind of video. But, uh, but we, we actually have uh, a loaf already pre-made that we okay. will show at the end or whatever so we can see how it works. And this is called No Need Bread and it's inexpensive, it's easy, it's fast, and like I say, Everybody can do it. In fact, we should do a show, Ben, where you are the, the cook. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be an eight-hour show. <laughs> <laughs> Seven-hour cleanup. So. <laughs> Seven Boy, that's oh, a boiling. Uh -huh. It's rolling now. Yeah, that's a noodles. Rolling. I'm not actually sure how long to even cook them, so i got to keep testing. Let's see. Five to eight minutes. Five to eight minutes. So yeah, so all you do is mix up those four ingredients and then uh, we'll put this, we'll let it sit 
come to think of it for a while and uh, but I just wanted to show you but we actually have a, a low far prepared for our for our meal so and that goes into that pan and you put it in the oven. it goes into a Dutch oven that's one thing I, Dutch oven, for, yeah. I forgot to mention yep. that's a, a really important ingredient is that you need a Dutch oven to do this well and uh, and Dutch ovens are you know, relatively inexpensive. I think I got one at Goodwill for like I don't know ten bucks or something. I think a lot like of people that. have them. Yes. So that's that's the, the the other key thing. So so you just mix up those four ingredients, create this ball of flour, let it sit for oh like I say six eight hours, and then uh, preheat your Dutch oven. So you have to uh, preheat it uh, for like um, at half an hour at 450 degrees. So you get it good and hot, and then you put in your your dough and you cook that for uh, 25 minutes with the cover on, and then you take the uh, cover off the Dutch oven for the last five or ten minutes, and boom, you got yourself a nice homemade loaf of bread. Is your Dutch oven cast iron? Of course. I don't remember. Yes. Okay. Yes. Isn't yeah. that just standard? Yeah, it's pretty standard, and I'll, I'll yeah. show you. I actually have two Dutch ovens, which is a little crazy, but uh, but yeah, but uh, we can. We'll show you the Dutch oven, and uh, but that that's pretty much it. And uh, we can. Uh, I guess we can show the loaf of bread now, we'll or we can. Up. Yeah, we'll cover it up, and then uh, we can show you the loaf of bread what it comes out at. Yes. And here is the finished product. A beautiful, nice, homemade loaf of bread. Uh, and it's inexpensive and easy. So, hey. I could do it. I, yes. Next show, we're going to have Ben yeah. making bread or, and, and something or else. Something. Too. Yeah, something, yeah, something really Ingredients good. for that? How much would that cost? 75 cents? If that. If right. that. Yeah, maybe 50 cents, uh, something, somewhere in that, mm. that neighborhood. But it, it, it'll last for a while. It, it's, it's great to have around, and it comes out fresh. You get this nice, fresh bread uh, uh, whole thing. with, And it's got a nice crust on it, if you like a, like a crusty oh, yes. loaf. With uh, butter. You have to have yeah, butter. Oh, butter, yes, exactly. So, And that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, take the bread and uh, let Robin and Chris take over and uh, see, what, see what's next. Looking forward to trying some of that bread. Okay, those noodles got done while Mark was talking over there. And <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Darn it. So the noodles so, are done. You know, the thing about noodles, you don't want to overcook your noodles, basically. No. So you want them to be a little all done. And this is rice noodles. So uh, not exactly the same as regular pasta. But the other thing is, you know, if you want it partially to prevent it overcooking, you want to just... Mm -hmm. Rinse it in cold water right away, that stops the cooking process. So would this be less or more starchy than other noodles, or does it? Well, it's gluten-free, that I would say. Okay, well that It's helps. got a slightly different flavor. I think it's less starchy, okay. but it's total starch. I mean, mm -hmm. it's rice. Yeah. So, total starch. Yeah. Carbs. I mean, we're not going low-carb here. No. This meal is going to be, you know, pretty much vegetarian. There's only one exception ingredient. I kind of fish want to sauce. show this because I don't think everybody's familiar with this. This is fish sauce. Fish sauce t kind of smells like a dirty sock mm -hmm. when you first take a whiff of it. Have you ever smelled fish sauce? I have. Yeah, it's, it's pretty gross. Is that Asian market on South Park Street still open? In yeah, yep. So yep. got this. Uh, I might have. That's you. I think it's called Oriental Market or something. There's like that. about five of them in Madison, okay. but you I think, is where I got this one. And. Um, this particular brand is a good brand, and I. I was, think it lasts a while. It oh yeah, a bottle like this will last me a year because okay. you don't use a lot. It's just it's a flavor enhancer, a huge flavor enhancer. If you wanted to make this recipe vegan, you could put soy sauce instead of the fish sauce. Okay. Because otherwise, everything is going to be vegan. All right, that makes Not sense. that I'm committed to that. It just happens to be something I really like. And we're very hungry today. <laughs> so, uh, Chris is going to start chopping up some leeks. Because yep. we're actually going first to the tomato soup. So, uh, 
if you would, cut the ends off of those and then just cut them into very fine little slices. Fine slices, yep. And so start at the end and then maybe go to here. Got it. Yeah. Now, Chris was chosen as assistant because of his very striking good looks, but he also does know how to cut and use a knife. So those are two separate things. If you're, if you're good looking, Unrelated, you have no yeah. business in a kitchen, or what is this? <laughs> no, I'm showing that a strikingly good looking person can also cut. Good. Glad we're, I'm finding out what kind of show this is. The other thing that's going on here is this is going to be a roasted tomato soup. Wow. I don't know if you can actually show that, yeah, but there's the tomatoes and they are already roasting and they're getting pretty close. Mm -hmm. We did that ahead because I didn't think there would be time for everything. And so what we're going to do with those leeks is we're going to put them on the stove top. I may have to clean my pan before I use it because that's just how we roll around here. So is this kind of a There's tomato? No point in getting that clean right away. Tomato bisque. Sorry. Tomato bisque. Uh, it's going to be. Yeah, this is going to be tomato roasted tomato leek soup. Okay. Part of the reason for this is because we planted about a thousand leeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so you want to <clears> use your garden produce up. Uh, recipe like this is perfect. So we're going to take that and. Olive oil. Does the uh, olive oil matter with the virgin, extra virgin, extra, extra, or is that kind of a gimmick? I mean, certainly people say so. Okay. I haven't been able to tell much. I pretty much always use extra virgin olive oh. oil. And does the brand matter? Uh, like, where did you get that? So, I did participate in a taste test once on mm. various olive oils. Okay. I would say that they weren't very different, really, but a little bit, and yeah. it's kind of a matter of preference, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know. I'm sure that you can go to a store and get the most expensive olive oil or the cheapest olive oil, and they're both going to work. I see that's so, the I, great value. <laughs> this, is, this is the Walmart yep. version. Yeah, that's all I have, so I'm going to have to use that today, although I don't really think it's bad, and in fact, this taste test that we were doing, uh, I think it was actually in the context of a cooking class, and uh, I think the Walmart one ranked pretty well, high. Well, who the... makes that? That is, it could come from a big, you know, they just put a different label on it. Oh, uh, exactly. Right. Who knows what, where it really comes from? They mm -hmm. put their store brand on there, and store brand is oftentimes a good bet because store brand... I'll take those leaks now. Mm -hmm. Store brand, you know, they're gonna, they got their own reputation to conserve. Now he left this in, I'm gonna throw that out with all the rest. We're gonna saute this, and then we need a couple of cloves of garlic. I think over there in the corner, if you can peel me up a couple of cloves, maybe three or four cloves of garlic. All right. Okay. I should have had this out, but I didn't. Garlic press. See, now that's a press. good smell. Not, if not everybody knows what a garlic press is, you put your garlic in here and you crank it down. It shreds it. It's a little bit too hot. Remove it. I'm just sauteing up these to make them soft. Oftentimes with leeks, you got to be pretty careful about getting the dirt out. But the ones that we grew this year are not that dirty. We got that feedback from other people. I think it's because we didn't plant them very deep. So that makes a difference. Let me know when you use the garlic press because I want to get a shot of that. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll be pressing it right into the... Okay. Right into the uh, thing. Okay. We probably need to talk about other things while this is happening. Well, let's see. You've got what are other ingredients? Lemon juice? Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, that's all part of the salad. So I just kind of want to oh, okay. get this going first, and then we'll turn our attention to the salad. But, but, you know, ordinarily I probably would be doing pretty much everything at once. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
just to keep things interesting for myself. And now I'm actually realizing that I ought really have just started with this big pot for my saute. Mm. I just uh, kind of spaced that out, and now I'm going to be cleaning two dishes. It's so. okay, it's Monday. I guess that's an excuse. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Yes. Or maybe I'm just nervous because I'm on camera. Mm. Not really. I'm not really accustomed to that. That's the thing. But that gave me a chance to add a little more olive oil. Yeah. It only makes it taste better. And then mm. that in there. How's that garlic coming? Oh, slowly. It's coming great. So this is the garlic press. Take a couple of cloves and put it in there. I guess not everybody has a garlic press, but... No, that's for sure. You don't have one? No, are you kidding? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. And then you just shoot, and look how easy that was. Yeah. In there. Wow. You'll be able to smell it in a sec. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Smells good, doesn't it? It doesn't take much. Those other cloves. I think that's enough, yeah. Okay. So that is there. That is there. That is getting cooked real nice. And, you know, you want to cook them till they're a little soft. Leeks are delicious. I never knew anything about leeks until about a year ago. Now, I do leeks. All right. Now, and you have those at, your, at the farmer's market? Huh? You have those at the oh, farmer's yeah. market? We bring okay. them every time. And they're pretty popular. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good for, I guess, soups is what they're really good for. Okay, so look at that. Wow. Steaming tomatoes. I can't even see because my glasses are all fucked up. Throw that in there. Uh, this So this uh, tray had just a bunch of tomatoes, and then the tomatoes were, you know, I sprinkled some olive oil on them, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and in they go. And we're going to just let that simmer for a while. Now the other thing we're going to add to that is this chai latte. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's actually, no, thing. this is actually Mark's storage container for his homemade Recycle. vegetable broth. Oh, okay. <laughs> Rather than sending it to the trash dump, he's reusing that container. Yeah. Yes, and now I just threw a bunch of homemade bread vegetable broth. Uh, I guess you'd have to ask him how that's made, but I'm pretty sure it's just kind of steeping a bunch of vegetables with some salt. So you don't really throw anything away, I guess. Try not to. As little as, little as possible mm -hmm. in terms of land filling and all that, you mean? Yeah, or just as yeah. far as um, if you were to cook, what is that called when you just throw everything in a pot? With If you're making a pot roast, you just kind of throw everything in. Oh, yeah, I suppose. And right, and so like the vegetable scraps could certainly be used mm -hmm. yeah, for over broth. for yeah. broth. Broth, yeah. Okay, so next thing we're going to... Now what are we doing? What, what about this? Oh, that's for the salad, yeah, okay. Yeah, yes, and so we're actually going to turn our attention to the salad because this um, is going to need to simmer for okay. a while, and watching that will be very boring. <laughs> okay, so next, I guess we need another cutting board, and we're going to start with this Chinese cabbage. That is Chinese cabbage. Um, this is an excellent vegetable. It stays alive in the fridge for probably a month and a half. Chinese you know, if you cabbage. buy a Chinese cabbage and you know, use it all up, and then you come back a month and a half later, and it's like, oh, still good. Still, still good. Cabbage. There it is. Yeah. So we could make that into small bits, um, slices. Yeah. So cut just start. And yeah. Yeah, cut off the end and throw it out way and then just start slicing up the thing. And, you know, pretty thin. Mm hmm Yeah.
And that is what? Basil. Basil. Okay. This is fresh basil. I'm going to throw this in the soup. I forgot to put it in, so we'll do that. We'll do that while Chris is doing the chop there. Fresh basil from the garden. The fresh herbs are one of the best things yeah. you can put in your food. What herbs do you have here? You told me, well, quite a while ago. Uh, what? You mean on the garden? Yeah, in the garden. Uh, we have cilantro, uh, basil, Thai basil, uh, mint, lavender, rosemary, thyme, mm. oregano, um, parsley. I think that might be it. Could be more. I don't know. Did you mention sage? Sage, I don't have Parsley, sage. Parsley, sage. I had a sage. I was getting kind of a mute yeah. song in my head. I had a sage plant. It was quite large and magnificent. But somebody dug it up and it got killed. Oh. I'm not going to say who did No, it. I think I know who did <laughs> <laughs> Now is peppermint, no, you said mint, not spearmint or peppermint. We have mint. peppermint and this mint that we're going to use today, which uh, I got from Janet Babbitt, I think. For a dollar fifty, and um, it is now a huge patch. Mm -hmm. I thought it was indestructible, but the one at my house died out for some reason. But it was uh, you chocolate you mint. It was built as chocolate mint. Well, put those into the bowl, and yeah, the leaves should go in. Okay. Uh, let's just see how much volume we have, because the problem is that the bowl is only so big. The other problem is that some dirt just went in there. Oh no. <laughs> Dirt doesn't actually hurt you. That doesn't anyhow. really matter, does it? No, no, no. I don't know. I'd get a little fastidious, but dirt doesn't actually really hurt anything as long as it's not, you know, like chicken poop dirt yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. but, uh, supposedly you need a little bit of dirt in your diet. Minerals. It, yeah, it can, I don't know. I don't know what for what mm -hmm. reason we need it, but apparently it doesn't hurt us any. I'm not sure how much of this to use. What would you use mint for? I mean, of all the herbs you grow here, I always think of mint. Mint is going into this salad. Yeah. Is that the least used of, uh, I, I think of like when people have uh, lamb chops depends. or pork chops or something like that. It depends. But I can tell a story about mint. Yes, please. Um, so I'll, I won't mention the name of the friend who was having a Kentucky Derby party. And we're okay. over there. Oh, and he mint. serves a mint julep. julep, which this is like a heavy alcohol thing, and mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, yeah. You know, I, I'm just like fruity drink only. It's not a minty ice cream drink. A lot of people think, oh, it's a refreshing mint. <laughs> it's it's, it's like a glass of booze with a leaf. Glass of booze with the mint sprig in it, right? <laughs> really. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, but it's got a mint sprig, so it's probably all right. Yeah. And I drink it. I'm like, where did you get this mint? And my friend says, oh, right over there by the door, by the, by the porch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's catnip. <laughs> wow. So we had a catnip julep. Yeah. So how, was the, how did the derby turn out? <laughs> I have no idea. I didn't watch the derby. So that's, I think, bourbon, isn't it? Some... I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I, yeah like... probably bourbon. Wow. So this is not an annual event then for you? No, no, no. I never got invited back. No, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> so yeah, the basil's going in here. I'm not even sure if I'm doing it right because I've never made this before. How about oh. that? Might as well do a cooking show on something you never made. Well, it you shows your first that time. anyone can do it. Yep. Correct. Okay. So next is to thinly slice some of that cabbage. Now, did you see how he did that? He yeah, and I see there isn't <laughs> there isn't a food processor in sight. You just you cut everything. I guess. That's well, there is actually a food processor. We have oh. a very nice one in the cupboard. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we were not going to use it. Today, show. Now I'm going to do some cutting myself here. I'm just cutting this. This is a green onion, as opposed to a leek. They look kind of similar, and people get them confused. But it's got a round stem comparatively to the leek. It's got well, what's the taste difference? Oh, it's a little more oniony, and that one's a little more leaky. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <He's> just... <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to argue. You've got the knife. So I'm not gonna... <laughs> yeah, good, good thinking. 
looks great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. You want to get yeah, rid of some yeah, of no, the core? Yeah, I want that core out. Okay. Or we don't really want to put the core in. Yeah. And we don't need to use the whole cabbage, probably just that half of it anyhow. Okay. The cabbage is another thing that sits in the fridge forever. Well, what can you use that, instead of tossing it, what would you use that for, if anything? Or just throw it uh, in the Throw it in the broth? Broth, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I'm just going to add these little green onions to the mix. This is a, this is a Vietnamese bun salad. Um, bun? Bun. Now, if you go to a restaurant and you order bun at a Vietnamese restaurant, there's usually some meat involved in it. So this is a, kind of a different How do you spell that? Anything I've ever seen. What? How do you spell that? B-U-N, bun. Oh, okay. Like bun. It, uh, it was on the package. Did I throw that away? I don't know. The vermicelli is called bun. Yeah. Oh. Here it says it. Where does it say it? Bun. See, look at this now. It's got English and then French, and then this, and mm. that is English, I think, and then this. All over kinds the world. of writing. No. European and Asian and everything. Exactly. It's some kind of Asian language. I guess I'm going to say Vietnamese, but that's a Vietnamese writing. Okay. I don't actually have any knowledge about that. I'm probably wrong. Going all the way up on the green stems. Onion. Throw that in there. And throw the cabbage in there. Now, radish it does oh, not yeah. appear on my recipe. You might actually want to put the recipes so people can take a screenshot. Uh, these recipes are See the cabbage going not as precise as. Yeah, I'll put it on in there. Is it going to even be a big enough bowl to harbor all these? I don't know. Probably not. We're going to have a little problem. Oh, well, that's okay. Okay, so then we also have cilantro from the garden. And we have Thai basil. So this is Thai basil. So here's like, this is the Italian basil, and this is the Thai basil. Thai basil, it's got kind of skinnier leaves, mm -hmm. a little different flavor. Honestly, I think if you subbed in regular basil to this recipe, you'd be just as happy eating it. Because a lot of times Thai basil is a little harder to come by. Mm -hmm. But since I have some, grow it. I'm putting this radish in mainly for color. It's going to look nice. Anybody wants to do this at home? This is a very delicious recipe, and we are hungry, so we're going to be eating it at the end. Yeah. Does it have to? Uh, I mean, is it best if it kind of um, melt? Yeah, that's a good word for you know, even for hours and hours or overnight. Not or? necessarily. I think this is really a very good fresh salad, but it. It keeps overnight in the fridge. Mm -hmm. I've had it even like three or four days. I've taken some leftovers to work or whatever and been very happy yeah. at lunchtime. Yeah, toss it in. Can you put, what What else could you add for color that wouldn't just ruin the whole um, point of, well, there you go, okay. But no, no. Uh, let's say, red or yellow pepper, that would kind of throw it off. Uh, I, I think you can put whatever you want in whatever the salad. Want. It's really... You know, that's kind of the beauty of a salad, is that uh, you can have whatever vegetables suit your fancy. Mm -hmm. If you like the flavor of something, just throw it in there. It's not hard. I think maybe sometimes people are afraid to cook. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just watching. Now, I, cilantro to me is, oh, we talked about this in the garden, that I'm one of those percentage of people who... Yeah. It's kind of soapy. Oh, know. it's soapy for you? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You might not want to eat this one. Yeah, I, and actually with this recipe, if you are such a person, you can easily just omit the cilantro. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's no reason. There's no reason we really have to do anything. That's, you know, if you want to learn how to cook and you're afraid, you know, just tell yourself what's the worst that can happen. Yeah. You, what, you throw it out and go... Get a burger somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, don't throw it out. <laughs> Give it to Al. Yeah. We could bring Al in any time and let him have at have at things. So what did you put in there? 
Oh. What did I put in there? Yeah. The Thai basil? I put in the Thai did basil. And I put in cilantro. And, and I have yeah, mint. I'm chopping up mint. mint right here. Yeah, now. yeah. I think we just want a little bit more of all of them. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of herbs in the salad just really, Are really has good. a powerful flavor. You can smell how good that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mint is really yeah, it's something. potent. Supposedly chocolate mint, but honestly, I don't really find it tasting very chocolatey. So. You can call it what you want, but it's not peppermint either, really. Just fresh mint from the garden. One of the easiest things to grow because it's actually slightly invasive and holds on really well. Put this more in. And we have also here this. Mm is an Arme Armenian pale green cucumber, something I'd never heard of until this year. Um, it's actually a squash oh, all right. of some sort, but it tastes a lot like a cucumber. And so I'm just gonna put that in there too for fun. And a regular cucumber would absolutely suffice in this recipe. And like I said, whatever you want, you know, if you got a favorite vegetable that you don't see here and you want it in there, I guess you have to decide whether it's good to eat raw because we're basically doing this all as a raw food thing, but, uh, you know, maybe you like, you could throw a cooked vegetable in there if you wanted. There's no reason why you can't. Basically do whatever you want. I think once you get comfortable in the kitchen, recipe modification becomes pretty, the, pretty much the norm. Uh, so we should see if we can stir that together, but the problem is that we've got to fit all the noodles in there, too. <laughs> That's a big... <laughs> I don't need a bigger bowl. I think we need a second bowl. Ooh, here's one. That's so small. I'm not a bigger bowl. Here it is. Okay. So we're making enough to feed... Oh, there we go. ...about ten people here. Um... Oh, my noodles got a little bit sticky. So, to remedy that, ah, things are falling. I, mean, I see you getting this all on camera. Yeah, but that makes it like a real, because that happens in everybody's kitchen. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Definitely happens in my kitchen. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna just pour a little bit of peanut oil on these noodles to kind of get them to. Not stick. Not stick, yeah. Mix them together. Yeah, it's working. Don't ever really want to be afraid to get your hands involved in all of no. this. But it is working, yeah. They're kind of loosening up. And then we'll mix them in with the, all the. Well, that's what a real cook or chef does, is they use their hands to stir more yeah. than. And they... certain, yeah, yeah, for sure. Certain things, you know, yeah. if you're making a dough, like, or a pastry, a lot of times hands mm -hmm. are the best way to do it. Get some of everything in there so that it kind of mixes up, and then we can do that there, and we can do it on the other side with the rest of the noodles. And pour some of that peanut oil in there. That'll be good. Peanut oil is a good thing. Sesame oil in some of these. I would, I would maybe put sesame oil in a salad like this. But this is a kind of salad that, you know, can kind of be a mainstay of its own yeah. in the meal. It's got the starch in there and your oils. Just trying to separate the noodles. And it's almost them. vegan. Yeah, the fish sauce is the only... Yeah. It's, okay, yes. So what we need to do now is make the dressing. So the dressing is a Vietnamese fish sauce. With dirty floor, we wash our... <laughs> yep, I know. That happens in every... People drop stuff all the time. Yep, people do. Yeah. Yes. So I'm putting three-fourths of a cup of water in there. And one-fourth of a cup of the fish sauce. And one-fourth of a cup of the lemon juice. Now, 
really lime juice is what it should be, but I don't have any. Oh. So. I'm just going to use the lemon juice. Lynette brought this over the other day. Very much saved our butts at the last minute. And then I kept the rest of her lemon juice. <laughs> Didn't even give it back to her. <laughs> well, she'll see this. And <laughs> she probably will. You'll have your day in court. Yes, and or she'll, she'll, enjoy, she'll enjoy to hear about that. Yeah. It's very selfish of me, but. I'm thinking this would taste better the second day. I don't know why. I uh, I, uh, it definitely tastes just as good. As good. The second day. Now, right here, I'm going to use these little, I'm going to make it a little spicy today. These are hot peppers. Mm. And these are like almost the hottest, the S, they, S you can get, you know, in terms of peppers. So what's the real name of them? So this one's called Big Thai. Um... And this one's called the Ryman Rocket. I think that's been mentioned on our show before, the Ryman Rocket. Mm -hmm. And I, I may be in for a little trouble if I put my finger in my eye mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. later today. And, you know, normally I'd be more uh, careful here, but because I'm on camera, I'm nervous. Here we go. So, uh, the Ryman Rocket was given to me by friend Maya. And... She had a friend who bred those and kind of crossed them, I guess, until they got, got the one they liked. And now that breeds true, which is important. Did I put the sugar in? No. I mean, I really know that this is something I basically preach against in terms of a healthy diet. Yeah. <laughs> However, it's key in this recipe. Got to put some sugar in. Uh, a quarter of a cup. That's a lot, yeah. isn't it? Hmm? That's a lot of sugar. Yeah, but you know, this is gonna this is gonna dilute out and mm, okay. feed twenty people. Right? And it makes the flavor, I think, too. It definitely it makes... it's important. It's key. Yeah, you can't really omit that. I mean you could, I guess, if you want to be that way, but gonna fool around. I'm gonna, make, uh, I'm gonna go through all the trouble. It's close enough. Add that in there, and I just need a, uh, I need a lid, I don't have a lid. Okay, use lid, but that's okay. So then we're just going to shake the heck out of it. I've made a big mess. Yeah, that's normal. Pretty much. Yeah, where's Al? <laughs> would he uh, would he go for that? Mm -hmm. It's a little too uh, probably not too raw for him. He likes raw food. The chickens will love it. So this is my Vietnamese fish sauce. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see, is it really, really well shaken? I think so. And we have. Going on to there. Let us put it in two two installations, one on each side. There we go. Stir that up and not with your fingers, probably. Yeah. Uh, here's a. And that's not even really a very good spoon. It'll do the trick. Try and break up these noodles a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Get get everything well distributed in there. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that look pretty? It does. Yeah. So colorful. And very tasty. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that's the salad. And now here we have the soup. And this has been here doing its thing for a while. Um, so the next step is really just to blend it all together. This is an immersion blender. If you don't have one of these, it's, it's totally a game changer. well worth having. Is it a game changer? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> the immersion blender. I'll go that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's say you just take it. it. It kind of is a game changer, you know. <laughs> Go in there and... Oh, 
Sorry, I got you all splattered. No, it's okay. I'm going to say that if you really wanted to be very perfectionist about things, you could probably, you know, slip the skins off the tomatoes before you do all, you know, before you put them in. Oh, I do. But, yeah, I just incorporate them. Why? Cool. That looks pretty good. Does that have to, what is it, reduce? Is it called reduce down? or? No, it doesn't. It's soup. It's pretty thick. I mean, look at that. At this point, actually, if you... If you didn't find it thick enough, you could add, or if you found it, if you found it to be too thick, you could add some um, more broth. But I don't think it's too thick. I think it's pretty good. I mean, you could reduce it. Yeah, if you thought it was too thin, you could reduce it. But how does that look? Pretty good, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's done. And oh, awesome. Uh, whoa, I forgot one thing. Uh oh, there's always. Uh, what did oh, you forget? Oh, okay. Oh. Peanuts. Yeah, we want to we wanna sprinkle that baby up with some crushed peanuts. So if I could find a clean surface, I guess we can just put it right on top of that. Yeah, that's good. Clean Wonder. vegetables. Yep. So those are peanuts and we need a. Unfortunately, these drawers all stick, but ah. a rolling pin. A rolling pin works great. I foresee these flying everywhere, but uh, we'll see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they will, but that's okay. But they that, don't have to be super definitely... fine, do they? No, they don't have to be super fine. No, yeah, I just want them crushed. And yeah, if some fall to the floor, Al will definitely. Oh, Al will be all over these, yeah. So, what kind of, does it matter? Are these the, like, no salt or dry roasted? No, uh, those are salted. They're dry, those are just like planter salted roasted. peanuts. Yeah. I mean, you could do whatever you want with that also. I see you but went to the same salt. Asian market, great value. I see the label. Oh, the, yeah, right, exactly. So, the Asian market, you can get peanuts. That are unsalted, mm -hmm. probably at Walmart too. Okay, that's good enough. Perfect. Just throw those on on the top. That'll really make a nice. If you have a peanut already, you can always omit. You could use uh, sunflower seeds or pepitas mm -hmm. for that. You know, if you like that a little, that's a little bit more of a subdued flavor. Walnuts. Walnuts. Yeah, do we have enough material yet for the show? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> have we got your Cuisinart? You can talk about your Cuisinart. I don't, do I have a, what's the Cuisinart? That's the brand name of the immersion print. Oh, 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 there it is. Yeah, I, mean, one I, of our I talked as much about that as I want. <laughs> and here's the brand. It's a game changer. No, this is Ooh. one that was actually made ahead. But that is the, yeah. that's the product that Mark created with his recipe. It looks so real. Recipe. It's, yeah. It is actually real and it's still warm. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, we're hungry. Wow. You want to have some brunch with I us? might try the salad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to eat. Are we going to eat I mean, we got to clean this up, but then we'll eat. Oh, that's the bad part. <laughs> All right. Good. Are you going to film And so that? the real name is? I mean, I'm calling it bun salad. I don't know. Okay, B U N salad. B U N, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you saw the recipe. Yep. I put that up at the top. And I'll admit the recipe's a little on the vague side. I mean, I don't really put any sort of quantities on there. And the reason is because you got what you got. Yep. You know, just use what you have. Yeah, the ratios are all kind of good. Well, let's see what it tastes like. Yeah, so you can use whatever you want in there. Yeah, on film. Yeah, there's people who just don't care. Why don't you put it in there? Here's some bread. And, uh, mm, soup. Sure. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you'll come back next week and every week to watch our town.